Well, hello everyone, and now welcome. Welcome to a game between Fike or Baiko versus F FPXY. Not quite sure how to say FPXY's name. And this game is taking place here on Autumn Leaves, a new map that you may not be familiar with. For all you guys out there who are playing Warcraft 3 Champions and keeping this game alive, I thank you for doing so. The community is absolutely great. And well, just having a great, great time indeed. Why? Wow, we didn't set up beforehand? Uh, a little. Um, as we're looking at things already getting underway. Let's go ahead and um, well, move things on over. FPXY going up against Baiko in this um, in this matchup here, we see Baiko spawning as the blue undead over here on the top right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, over here on the bottom left, we have, well, a red human. Uh, should die. <laughs> Alright, so apparently they're just talking to each other, having a little bit of fun before the matchup match does begin. We are looking at, well, already a zigger or... Excuse me, what is that? Ziggurat already down here at Altar of Darkness, training up that Death Knight. And we should be getting in a couple of ghouls. Coming back down on the opposite side, Archmage coming in from FPXY, as it is going to be an undead versus um, human matchup. And now, and now this is something that I do wonder, um, you know, joking aside, uh, I, I think even Remo had, had joked about it on, on Twitter. Um, as an undead player, he's like, I finally beat a human player with the same MMR as me, you know, and I was just like, wait, what? And I was like, what do you mean you finally? And then, and then I, I, you know, remembered it was Wednesday. So yeah, or was it Thursday? Yeah, April Fools. Just uh, absolute, absolute, just blast following the community. As well, Blizzard tries to balance a game that they claim to care about. Uh, but, well, hopefully the balance patches are going to work. The community can only do so much. I don't think the community can actually make balance changes to the game. And, and hopefully, well, this round of changes um, is a step in the right direction. If it, um, even though it may not ultimately be where the final destination is. Coming back down to the south here, we do see a footman actually inside of the base of, of um, a bicycle right now, dealing a little bit of damage. And you can see this footman is actually like full on hacking at this acolyte. And this acolyte is just like, yeah, what, what, whatever, right? Like, no, no real big deal at all. I can just go ahead and constantly move around. The ghoul is actually dealing more damage to the footman here, as the footman is down, what? about 160 hit points and the acolyte still can just teleport back around really not a problem still trying to move away and pretty regularly here but it actually looked like the school this foot an acolyte might get taken out if he's not very careful meanwhile Dak down across over here and death knight can end up taking some damage as well trying to do a little bit of stealing does get that steal off right there as the forest troll trap we're going to get taken out level two now on that archmage there is one dead acolyte while the tech two tier two um, is starting so that is in fact a very big deal here as the skeletal minions and other remaining units going to try and back away. Looks like as though that Death Knight did gain a little bit of extra experience as well, getting up to level 2. And well, some some interesting play at the very start of this game. And what is going to end up going down? One Acolyte missing um, off over here is going to drop the amount of gold that you mine during that tech to tier 2, which is going to negatively impact, well, Baiko as he comes into tier 2 here. Um, undead have a very strange position to be in once tier 2 finishes they want to get to tier 3 they want to get in the, they want to get a second hero they want to well they want to do a whole bunch of lot of things here as peasants are going to end up getting taken down are we going to see another skeletal minion taken down there yes death knight getting in some more kills still as crypt fiends finally join in on the battle death knight does have a little bit of hit points left off on the side here somehow the archmage is not chasing after that unit as the death knight will be able to back away meanwhile down to the south here one low hit point footman down to 60 hit points trying to run back inside is it going to be able to do exactly that it will getting a little little bit of a lead on the skeletal minions and now trying to head back off to the north as the skeletal minion still chasing after that footman again oh that peasant could have perhaps held back just a bit as the death knight sits at level two picking up a new rod of necromancy all right didn't micro the acolyte but he was stealing experience from the other side here we don't see an arcane vault as of yet i was expecting to see the arcane vault especially as you are taking the tier two or not taking the tier two you do need access to some early healing 
All right, low hill point footman in the middle of the map here of Autumn Leaves as the Archmage is going to be dropping some water on Michael's going after this 3-2-2 creep camp, which I do not believe will be giving level 3 to that Archmage. Halls of the Dead tech is already done. A new Acolyte being trained up. There is that Lich as well. Also going to be training up that Slaughterhouse as the Death Knight, well, very cautiously moves out to try and do a bit of creeping. And he will be able to get to level 3 here. Archmage sitting at 2.8. Um, well, another Wolf down to 54. What, what, wait, what? What is going on here? It looks like a little bit of, well, mis miscontrol on his units once again as the Red Human now trying to venture forth he is just shy of level three now compared to the death knight who was able to steal a little bit of experience trying to stay next to blight and still getting a little bit of that nat of well bonus regeneration while on blight as that lich about to make its way out all right archmage going after a skeletal minion is going to get taken down and give level three it will as the level three um, well archmage now alongside defended footman should be able to push back any attack that is brought to the table. Baiko now coming back across here, look, looking at, well, trying to wake up some creeps. Death Knight sitting at level three, gonna be forced to back up. Does have, well, Potion of Greater Healing. Rod of Necromancy charge is up as well. And that Frost Nova from that Lich could make a bit of a play. 25 supply army compared to 21. There's 19 workers for FPX. Why? The red human. And he still needs to train up a little bit more here. Arcane Tower is right there. A little bit of free damage onto that, um, well, onto that peasant. As the death that's still leading the charge here, needing to get an obsidian statue to follow up behind. I believe that was an obsidian statue train and training back when I saw that spinning earlier as the death coil frost nova finishes off a footman and also slows down a number of those other footmen as well. Double water elementals, however, gonna well cause a little bit of delay here. No real reason, real no real reason to stick around in this fight at all. As the footmen are now looking to back up, crypt being still there. Footmen looking to back up again as the death knight leaving that charge in, going up against the footmen and the scroll of regeneration, healing up some more of those back units again. Death knight really having a bit of a death wish as an obsidian statue finally gonna be joining in. Are we gonna get a death coil on that crypt fiend? It should be it coming in in a moment. No, and really. Baiko is doing a great job maximizing the amount of mana on that Death Knight, getting in Death Coils to get a little bit of experience as that Lich, well, is on the board with some experience now. All right, Death Knight looking the back again. We are looking at the Obsidian Statue with that Essence of Blight, getting in a bit of healing. Well, uh, that stag never had a chance. Sorry, Bambi. As we are looking at more and more skeletal minions joining in and trying to push back, um, push back all of these footmen. A second obsidian statue is already here. Footmen with the fen are doing a great job. Death Coil trying to finish off more units. Once more skeletal minions could get finished off here as the water elementals are going straight after the obsidian statue. But obsidian statues can take a little bit of damage as there is some natural regeneration from um, the unholy aura as the crypt fiends are now continuing the fight as well. And there goes a death coil, another death coil as that lich, even without that orb of corruption, dealing so much terrible damage. 34 supply army compared to 21 and this FPXY needing a brilliant hold to try and hold this off right now. All right, still um, the timing on this attack, very interesting, not waiting to get up into the 40 supply, staying in the 30s as we're looking at the skeletal minions taking down another farm here. Another round of regeneration getting underway to heal up some footmen before they join back in on the battle as there are so many skeletal minions and crypt fiends just lying ready to go. All right, we're looking at more damage coming back across here. Obsidian statue may need to back up. Teching the tier three is already underway and well, no destroyer form as of yet, obviously until that is done. Death Knight gets off another death coil again. Crypt fiends trying to back away. Footman, one footman without defend leading the charge here as that damage does add up very, very quickly. More defend now coming back in again as that Lich is going to finish off another Footman giving up to level two. Level two Lich looking to back up here, but taking a lot of arcane tower damage, losing much of that mana as one obsidian statue down to 109 hit points will slowly back away perhaps, trying to create a little bit of separation. Crypt Fiends. As the Crypt Fiends, well, volley against that Archmage once more. Obsidian Statues is really prolonging the length of this attack here. So far, FPXY, the Red Human, has been doing a great job of using, well, um, using the Arcane Vault and Scroll of Regeneration for a lot of heals on a lot of those footmen. But without the Mountain King yet, the Mountain King now just now showing up. 
there was really no danger of the Death Knight or Lich or any of the Crypt Fiends actually falling. Mountain King has taken quite a bit of damage here. Meanwhile, mass repairs on this Arcane Vault as FPXY sitting on a 1200 gold bank with no real um, idea or way how to spend any of that gold. Teching the tier 3 is already underway. A second barrack didn't get added in for Sundering Blades and Animal War Training and Knights when the time comes. But until that time comes, the Lich is already banking up a large amount of mana once again. All right, that first Obsidian Statue very low on mana indeed. Could have some troubles. That second Obsidian Statue trying to well, provide mana and hit points as a low a hit point Obsidian Statue could finally get taken down. Are we going to see it getting taken down? There we are, Mountain King and Archmage. Well, getting a little bit of bonus there. Frost Armor on the Crypt Fiend, making it even diffi more difficult for those Footmen to try and engage against those Crypt Fiends. Footmen with the Fend moving already too slowly as we're looking at um, the Arcane Vault while taking a little bit of damage again. One Meat Wagon would have been a, a drastic difference in this fight, being able to put pressure on the building safely as we're looking at Spellbreakers at bolstering the rest of that human army. All right. The red army here trying to push back more water elementals being dropped into play again. Obsidian statue doing more than enough. Death Knight with the Death Whale should be inbound here. No, doesn't even need it. That obsidian statue just doing a wonderful job as we are now going into destroyer form upgrade. However, with only one, um, wow, a Lich getting delivered an orb of corruption. And now that we have orb of corruption on the table, the Crypt Fiends just deal that much more damage as we see a Pit Lord getting added in on the fight. All right, Pit Lord off over here. Um, sorry, that Pit Lord is not really there. The overlay hasn't blocked it just quite yet as we may be looking at the Pit Lord trying to come in with Rain of Fire to stop some of this mining. This has been a very long battle here at the expansion location as the Pit Lord is now raining down fire and brimstone. Stormbolt stopping the Pit Lord in its tracks as he's gonna be running out of mana as well. Level four on that Death Knight, level two unholy or a faster movement speed, continuing to try to push on through as we're looking at, well, the um, Archmage would now with Orb of Fire being able to prevent much of the healing if the Death Knight is not careful. All right, finally, after that prolonged attack, not really going anywhere except giving experience to the undead army. Well, Baiko decides to back away. We are looking at no expansion coming in from Baiko. I would have thought an Acolyte could have made its way over to try and set up that expansion during that long, long engagement. Knights now leading the charge here. That sudden um, spending of 1,200 gold making a very big difference. No Sundering Blades as of yet, as one Crypt Fiend does get taken down. Animal War Training not done either, as the Knight is trying to back away. However, Cyclone picks up the Mountain King and that Paladin already. All right, continuing to fight once more. There goes another Stormbolt, and this is that power spike of the human army that was needed to try and go after all of these units. Sundering Blades now finally complete as the Knight is going to try and chase after that Crypt Fiend, but unable to do so that easily. All right, Knight going to go ahead and finish things off. 57, there goes, takes down another Crypt Fiend there as we are going to be looking at more damage still. Level 4 on that Death Knight, level 1 on that Pit Lord. Pit Lord does have Raid of Fire, but not incredibly useful in this, in this instance as the Paladin gets a well, tries to get off a holy light, but unable to do exactly that. Sundering Blades, as the knights are going after Crypt Fiends, Crypt Fiends, surprisingly fast, able to run away as both the Mountain King and the Paladin have now been taken out. A handful of knights, spellbreakers, and footmen out amongst the battlefield. No other heroes there, and this small army of Baiko being used like a surgical scalpel to um, deal large amounts of damage by picking off those incredibly important heroes. Peasant going to get taken down, most likely. A Crypt Fiend trying to get away, unable to catch up to a, 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 the Knight, unable to make up on that distance. As we're looking at the Destroyer coming in, perhaps going to get some Devour Magic. No, getting in some damage onto those units again. All right, Devour Magic could be incredibly important. The, the Devour Magic right there, Destroyer going to get be in trouble, going to get taken down, though, as the Death Knight's Death Coil did not heal up fully. Crypt Fiend trying to back away, and it looks like Baiko is having some trouble here. 37 supply compared to 62. He was pressuring for so long, but FPXY kept his cool and, well, was able to uh, able to fight it again. Uh, uh, so far, we're looking at the Archmage now trying to retreat back. I believe the Paladin has rejoined in on the fight. There is the Paladin now. There's a Holy Light 
as the knights are now retreating back once more this one crypt fiend trying to run away from a knight and how was a crypt fiend able to outrun a knight i thought the movement speed on the knight was supposed to be one of its major advantages um but well no apparently not at all that crypt fiend with average movement speed able to outrun and get to safety 50 supply compared to 62 we are looking at unholy frenzy on the pit lord and also on that lich very fast attack speed for that lich now as he's able to apply that negative armor debuff to multiple multiple units when needed all right there is those attacks so far that granite golem absorbing quite a bit of damage well dire frost wolves as well oh, death knight will need a death coil that lich that could be a little bit of a problem what is he thinking what is he doing that lich is down to 91 hit points finally backing away pit lord sitting at level three but we could have a potential creep jack right there orb of fire onto the lich lich is down lich is down death knight never got the memo to death coil there as we're looking at a well another necromancer getting finished off here all right water elemental going up against a frost dire wolf water elemental shouldn't have any problems finishing that off giving a little bit more experience again as we now see level two on the paladin as crypt fiends and other units getting well cleaned up in the process that may be exactly what fpxy needed in order to get back into this game he is strong economically and was able to deal sustainable or significant damage to his opponent here all right knights are trying to lead the charge once more units are trying to back away there's a holy light trying to save the paladin or a save a knight there as the death knight uses a potion of lesser invulnerability knights continuing to lead the charge once more destroyers are all in position just in case or sorry flying machines are are in position for destroyers but we haven't seen any destroyers as of yet death knight and lich now getting up to level five and level four respectively damage could add up very quickly as the death knight hero nuking potential is rather high all right going after more of those units again a knight very low there goes another knight in the loss there 42 supply army compared to 39 Baiko sitting on one base play, still doing a great job. 5-4-3 on his heroes, going up against a 4-2-2 without a level 3, um, well, without a level 3 Mountain King or Paladin. It is just that much more difficult to burst down any of, um, any of those units. All right, Unholy Frenzy, that did DPS. Yeah, rather high Sludge Flinger right here. Uh, one of the strange, strange creeps here on Autumn Leaves. Uh, Tome of Intelligence plus two picked up by the Pit Lord. I'm quite sure that that would have been better on the Lich, but, well, can't always, you can't always read the books you want to read. Coming back around, we're looking at the undead still doing a great job clearing up many of these creep camps, creating separation and really choosing his targets very well. Um, Dire Frostwolf is going to well, end up getting taken out here, causing separation, making sure that the Granite Golem um, was not engaged in that fight. I thought things were pretty much one and done for Baiko after that Lich was caught out in open field but well Baiko recovering rather nicely and picking up unholy aura as as the item drop there um one of those situations where you just kind of wish yeah just let me sell it and i wish it was worth more and that is what will be happening later on all right what is that death knight doing wandering around the other side we are looking at a transition into necromancers as well i don't see any meat wagons though Without the meat wagons, it's difficult to get enough units out onto the battle or enough corpses out onto the battlefield for it to really matter. We are looking at, well, no, no real priests out on the battlefield. Knights with bloodlust and sundering blades going after all of these skeletal minions. Archmage, well, Paladin may ever, be able to get to level three here. And this might be the power spike that FPXY needs in order to combat against his opponent. A 4-2-2 is drastically different in terms of hero spells than a 4-3-3 now that the Mountain King also has some scroll of healing going on. Coming back down, FPXY able to hold on to this expansion for forever and a day, if you remember. And we could have a, an additional, well, one more creep jack by the Red Army. Red Army getting into position here. Crypt Fiend does find the army, takes a storm bolt, and, well, and takes a bunch of sundering blades, falls very quickly. Bring up protection plus four. Pit Lord now with, uh, with 
um, a lot of armor on top of all of this, getting ready to engage again. 79 supply compared to 57 as the units are, well, on the move again. Are we going to perhaps get that Lich to level 5? Level 5 Lich does drastically change things up as well as we're looking at Reign of Fire to take down um, this Arcane Tower here. Meanwhile, in the back, a couple of Skeletal Minions causing a traffic jam. Lemmings on the freeway preventing the Knights from being able to easily run in. All right. Are we going to be looking at the engagement here now as a lot of repairs were underway? Pitlord trying to decide where to go, what to do, as he does have cleave and can attack very quickly as well. All right, there's Blizzard now raining down and trying to counteract Reign of Fire with Blizzard to maximize damage across many of those Necromancers as they got belted down with eight waves of 40 damage each. All right, Death Well, Potion of Lesser Invulnerability. It looked like the, um, a lot of damage could have been absorbed by the Archmage. Scroll of Healing being used there as the Scroll of Healing being used back on the other side as well. Necromancer. They are going to get taken down. It looks like they are going to be taken down once more. So much damage as the Archmage now needs to back up. 32 supply compared to 59. Baiko not ready for the sudden tech change here at all as the Knights are still going after that Death Knight. Death Knight does have a potion of healing ready to go. Staff of Sanctuary is trying to save. I believe that was a Knight there as the Death Knight still retreating back once more. Death Knight able to, well, heal a, a run away pretty easily um, as a Stormbolt lands down, finishing off another unit or two. Death Knight is going to finish off that Knight there. There's that Death Coil long distance. Death Coil finishes off 37 supply compared to 53 after that crazy crazy back and forth gold mine only 190 gold left new obsidian statue being trained in pit lord ready to rain down the damage here finishing off that arcane tower there goes a necromancer however and without i i, I repeat this without any additional gold um, well, things are going to be difficult. Stormbolt onto a Crypt Fiend. Gold Source has been depleted. No one's really mining. Well, take it back. FPXY is currently mining right here. But if he backs away from this location, then he's going to lose those peasants. 52 supplies still against 39 as the Pitlord dives on in, trying to maximize damage. There goes a Stormbolt onto that Death Knight. Death Knight could be in trouble. Holy Light, Scroll of Town Portal quickly in order to get away as the low hit point Crypt Fiend gets taken out as well. Obsidian statue shows up to the party. 36 supply now. A couple of Crypt Fiends, a couple of Acolytes. Acolytes should start unsummoning some key buildings and in order to get some um, in order to get some additional units trained up here. Maybe an additional Crypt Fiend, maybe an additional Obsidian statue, maybe an additional Necromancer. You need to do it before all of that. Well, nope. It looks as though it is just going to be straight for Scrolls of Healing for one last push. Pit Lord does have some crazy damage, plus 18 damage with Unholy Frenzy, can attack very quickly. Lich is also out onto the a battlefield, almost at level 5. Level 3 Frost Nova could, well, be an icy death for FPXY. Coming back down and across here death knight getting ready to engage pit lord gonna be moving across here there's that pit lord there is that rain of fire dealing that damage and it looks as though that lich is going to be able to get to level five pit lord gets to level five as well yuna's trying to back away trying to fight and well the farms actually protecting the crypt fiends in the back here no easy way to stop the blizzard though as the lich is still trying to make its way back over holy light trying to save stormbolt onto the lich lich could be in trouble lich gets a death coil a little bit earlier than you would normally see as the lich purposely backs away to dodge the blizzard and to absorb a bit more damage the other way death coil saves just in time but that was only a 400 hit point heal not the typical six because of that orb of fire lich is backed up into a corner is it going to get saved again yes it does it is just constantly getting saved there's a follow-up stormbolt and the lich may finally fall after such a long battle 27 supply compared to 47 and i believe that is going to be all she wrote pit lord trying to slice through that damage is actually rather high indeed against all of these units death knight now in trouble death knight finally going to get taken out there's a death blow to finish off another knight once more death knight now trying to re retreat and run back is he going to be able to do that that is actually rather funny as the paladin is trying to get in front and get into harm's way all right this pit lord is just taking down night after night 27 supply compared to 28 death coil almost finishes off the paladin as the death knight down to 161 mountain king stormbolt gonna finish off the death knight there 
taking it out. All right, a solo level five pit lord trying to go off, um, going going off against the remaining units. Can he finish off that paladin? Indeed, that's the question. Adding in some more damage, going after those units. There's the staff of sanctuaries taking the paladin all the way back. Stormbolt in the face of the pit lord, as the pit lord now looking to fall back again. Obsidian statue in the middle of the field, not doing anything. Paladin is, well, in Sanctuary, just healing up as much as possible as the Acolytes and, well, Crypt Fiends are off over here, but that Guard Tower was never taken down. What is it doing? It is trying to absorb damage. This is a little bit of a last-ditch effort. Throw the kitchen sink at your opponent and hope that it takes out something important, but that's as, a, as another Crypt Fiend ends up falling. Solo Pit Lord going up against the un or the human army who is mining a fair amount of gold still. It still has what four minutes of mining ready to go. Two thousand gold that should be enough to finish the deal. Pit Lord's gonna run on in here, try and rain of fire, and there instead gets a storm bolt for all of his efforts. Sorceress is, is here as well. There's a slow, there's a bash, and this game is done. Pit Lord um, trying to uh, trying to well, carry the team on his back and realizing, wait, there is no team. It is just me. As the Mountain King almost gets taken down, Pitlord just doing a last ditch effort there. There's the GG. As well, FPXY comes away with the victory. A brilliant hold against Baiko's extended extended uh, pressure at the expansion, and then being able to get the job done. Exit the game to lobby. All right. Ah, uh, okay. Come on. There. So there you have it. Resource score, yeah, eight thousand or no, twelve thousand difference. Alt Q Q. Yeah, resource score, um, resource score a twelve thousand difference. The amount of gold mined, and uh, all right, looking at that twelve thousand gold a difference, and FPXY almost losing it at um, at certain times with strong strong play, very very strong play overall. Um, but trap losing that lich in in that situation also. Uh, well, I can't I can't really fault Baiko um, very much at all. FPXY just did a brilliant hold, being able to make sure that he didn't lose too much while trying to defend his expansion and ultimately letting that economic advantage give him the lead. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.